This is the fencing module. To start, I need to enter the total length of the fencing I want to price up. This is 11 linear metres, so I enter 11 here in the red cell, at the top of the sheet. I now need to tell the programme the height of the fencing. It's 1.8 linear metres, so I'll enter this number here, in the height fence red cell. The height of the fence post has been automatically calculated, at a default of 2.4 linear metres. But as with all our programmes, you are in complete control, and I will be showing you the ways you can adjust this in just a moment, if, for example, you're using fence spikes. The wastage allowance for this job is set at the default of 6%. I will be leaving this as it is, but you can change it if you believe it needs to be set higher or lower. Now I need to select the fence type by using the drop-down menu. By clicking this, I'm given the options of panel or close boarded. I will select panel, but later in the movie I will show you how simple it is to change to the close boarded option. By entering these numbers, the fencing has been priced, but let's look at the pricing sheet and see what's been calculated. For the whole excavation, the programme has allowed for a post hole borer. The cost of this per day is £55.94. I'll need it for one day. In the plant cost column, the delivery and collection of this have also been taken into account, and I can see it's going to take three hours to make the holes. You could of course do this by hand, and you would simply untick the box, then put in the hours that you would need to do it. I'll be using the hole borer though, so I'll leave it as it is. I'm going to need seven posts. You will notice there is some blue text. This is telling me that I will need seven posts at 2.4 linear metres. If I have selected, within my materials, a post that does not meet this requirement, for example, a 1.8 linear metre post, the programme gives me a helpful warning in red text, pointing out that the post I have selected is not long enough and that I will need to select something else. If I click on the magnifying glass, the material choices for the post are made larger, to make it easier to read. I will select a 2.4 linear metre post. As this is long enough, the red warning text disappears. This is just one of the many ways that the program will continuously assist you to ensure your pricing is accurate and easy to complete. For the setting up of the posts, the buttons for temporary bracing have been allowed. If I click on the red question mark, I can see that 3 metres of batten have been allowed per post. If you wanted to alter this length, you can do so here in the picture, then just click Enter Details. I will be leaving it as it is, so I'll click Exit. Gravel board has been allowed, I will click on the red question mark. I can see the height of the gravel board is currently set at 225 millimetres. I will leave this as it is, but if you wanted to change it, you can do so here in the picture, then click Enter Details. The text in this picture also lets me know that the height of the gravel board is deducted from the height of fence that I entered at the top of the pricing sheet at the start. This is how the programme accurately calculates the height of the fence panel that I will need. Next I have the fence panels. Here I can select the type of panel I wish to use by using the drop-down menu. I'm happy with the selection, so I'll leave it as it is. I can see that I'll need six panels to do my fencing. The fence clips have been calculated. If I click on the red question mark, I can see that six clips have been allowed per panel, along with four nails per clip. I will be leaving it as it is. If you want to change this, you can do it here in the picture and enter the details. Continuing down the pricing sheet, I can see that cant rail and feather edge will not be required. These are options that would be needed if I had selected close boarded fencing. Further down the sheet, the same applies to the fixings for cant rail and fixings for feather edge. But I will be showing you the close boarded option very shortly. As you can see, post spikes is not currently selected. I will be using these, so I'll tick the box. You will notice quite a few things have automatically changed by selecting this. The sand, cement and mixer are no longer required, and the height of the fence post has also been reduced to 1.8 linear metres. So I can now reduce the length of the material I had selected for my post to 1.8 linear metres. The waste disposal method for the soils is currently a one yard bag, and I'd need to use one of these. But I'm going to be using small rubble sacks. If I click on the red question mark, I get a helpful picture I will click on the 0.18 yard rubble sack, and I now know I'm going to need six of these to dispose of the soils. The fixings for the panel clips, gravel board and the fence panels have all been calculated. 
The totals for the plant, materials, hours, labour and the overall total are here along the bottom. As I mentioned earlier, the fencing module has two fence type options, panel fencing that we've just looked at and also close boarded fencing that I'll show you now. By simply going back to the fence type drop down menu and selecting close boarded, the pricing sheet automatically adjusts all of its calculations. We can immediately see that close boarded is going to be more expensive than the panel fence. I will just untick post spikes as I won't use them for this close boarded fencing. Now going back to the top of the pricing sheet, I can see that the whole excavation has been allowed. For the posts, as I have deselected the fence spikes, I will select a 2.4 linear meter post. If I click on the red question mark, I can see the percentage of the post that the program has allowed to go in the ground. I will leave this as it is, but you can increase or decrease this, then click enter details. The battens for the temporary bracing and gravel board are still included. If you are not going to use either of these, you would simply untick the box. As we are now doing the close boarded fencing, the fence panels, fence clips and fixings for both of these items are no longer required and the program has automatically adjusted the pricing sheet to show this. The cant rail and feather edge is now required and the calculations for the costs of these have been done. I can see that I will need 218 linear metres of feather edge and I can also see this is where the price increases come from. As I decided not to use post spikes, the costs of the sand and cement for the posts, along with the mixer, have been brought back into the pricing sheet. Waste disposal has been allowed. As I showed you earlier, you can select a different method to dispose of the soils if you want. And the fixings for the cant rail, gravel board and feather edge have also been calculated. Along the bottom we have the totals for the close boarded options, these being plant, materials, hours, labour and the total cost. As we saw, it really is quick and easy to not only do the pricing, but to also change between the two fence type options. This could be really useful if you're with the client and they want a fence. You just put in the length and height of the fence, then have the ability to instantly show them the cost differences between the two fence types. Just don't forget that if you are doing this, the figures shown at the bottom of the sheet are cost and have not yet had your overhead or profit margins added. After watching this movie, I'm sure you will agree that pricing up fencing with this module just couldn't be more simple, fast or accurate.